My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop and today we are going to be talking a bit about um, a pause piston engines and uh, as you can see this was the uh, Opoc, uh, there was the Achilles and there was another couple of engines, uh, Eco Motors. Um, there's a lot of variants on this design, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of variants. Uh, there's a someone got me onto an Israeli generator that's a linear motor, kind of similar. It's not the same, but similar. And obviously, from this animation, you can just see that there are. There's just let's just pick the left hand side. There's um, a piston, a two pistons. So basically, what you're missing is a cylinder head. So what I want to do is just basically talk about these designs. Um, and the real benefits, because it's very hard to see. So if we look at what I've got here in SolidWorks is a side-to-side -side comparison. Same pistons, same rods, same cranks. Now, I know that's not exactly the same as the um, Opoc one. I've just shown you the Eco Motors one. But what I did want to show you is that this has been around for a long time. So this is a Deltic. Um, a Napier Deltic engine, as it says in the middle. And uh, this is not the best animation ever. And that's not me moving the mouse around. That's whoever did this video. Um, same kind of thing. This just gives us a, 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 you know, an example of what's going on. You have one cylinder and you have a piston at either end. You've got no cylinder head. Um, and you have in this, it's like a bishop sleeve where basically you have ports. A bit like the transfer ports or boost ports on a two-stroke. And generally these engines, well, they are two-stroke engines. Um, every time the pistons come together, you get an ignition event. Boom, right? And as you can see, to maximise this, and this was the whole point of the Deltic engine, was to make the most of this, a lot of these engines have two cranks, one at either end, and some pistons, uh, you know, basically coming together. It's almost like a reverse boxer, if you want to think about it like that. Now, obviously, you can see it has some superchargers because otherwise, the um, because the the ports are at the bottom, so there's an exhaust here and intake there. Um, what happens is is that if you go, if you draw too much of a vacuum, you'll actually never get the pistons apart because of crankcase pressure, stuff like that. Or basically, there's a lot of pumping losses due to that. So what you do is, is you, you know, you have this system where your exhaust goes out one end and your fresh charge comes in another. So it's a flow through system. It goes in here and out there. So your exhaust ports have to open early or you have to have pressure equal from your supercharger by the time you get to your exhaust ports. And it's a balancing act and it varies with revs and stuff like that and internal temperatures of how efficiently you burn in, so on and so forth. So in this configuration, it isn't the best um, throttling engine ever. You kind of want this to be like an APU or maybe a ship engine, which is what they're used for, or trains, where you start the thing going and you keep it there because your port geometry and your pressures are dependent on that. If you have your exhaust ports open earlier, like a two-stroke, so you can blow down first, then you've got a bit more flexibility. Um, but again, then you'd want to have some kind of resonance system-ish. You know, there's there's pros and cons. The best, not the best thing, the, the reason why the Deltic was like this is because if you're going to make a crankshaft, well, make a V, because that is one of the most efficient ways. Instead of having two separate crankshafts, just for one piston, you know, why not have one crankshaft that's a bit wider and have two pistons off it? So that's why this, that's why the Deltic was one of the highest um, power outputs for its size, because you've got this triangle thing going on, right? There's, for your size and because it's a two stroke, you can get shit loads of power. So for its weight, power for weight, this thing made a lot. However, that's not to confuse what's going on here. The reason why this had such good power to weight ratio was because of this arrangement. You do this with a 
crankshaft either side and just two pistons, so for instance, like this, then you don't maintain that power to weight ratio because we've now got this system. And this is what I want to show you. So what we've got here is, you know, a comparable system, same stroke, same piston, same boss and everything. And basically what you can do is just imagine where the head gasket would go, say there. Oh, that's a bit of line, actually, that line there. Just imagine that this is an engine split in two. So this system here on the right hand side, it is basically just behaving like a single cylinder like this, just one stacked on top of the other. Right, the difference is, is the cylinder head itself, right? So just say we could make this a four stroke system and we have this one versus this one. Forget, we're not even worrying about how you do your valve arrangements. What I'm saying is, is that there would be no difference between these two apart from it's double, you know? But then saying that you've got double the cranks, double the pistons, double the rods. The thing that you're missing is the cylinder head. So your static weight, the weight of this system versus this system would be lower. Because you would make this system on the right, a, this opposed piston jobby, a two stroke, then this is gonna fire twice as often as this is. So you get the weight benefit of not having a head and you get to fire twice as often. But let's just imagine we could make this system a two stroke, right? with you know forgetting the cylinder head with ports and stuff then this is this this is just double this now you might say yeah well this will have a cap on with a spark plug blah 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 blah. all right granted but you're basically in the same realm as one or the other what i'm trying to say is is this opposed piston system has nothing um remarkably unique apart from the fact that you are missing the mass of the head. There is another problem, it's a slight problem. You might think, well, there's a lot of thermal mass in this head, right? There's a lot of heat. So when you get a combustion event, it goes boom there, you've got your hot combustion gases in here, right? You leak heat to the piston crown, you leak heat to your cylinder wall, and you leak heat to your combustion chamber, right? And that means it's thermal efficiency isn't that good. Well, on this side, Matt, you would leak, just say there's an invisible line in the middle, right, across these two, you would leak to your cylinder, you would leak to your piston, but there is no head, right? We'll forget this band here. There is no head. And then on this, in a sense, the upper section, you'd leak to your cylinder, you'd leak to your head, but there is no cylinder head, right? So great, fantastic. However, this then becomes a problem. Just say we move, we just say we use this engine and this engine, we do this. We made an exact example where we just double up on this system here on the left and just get rid of the head and double up. If you did that, that is actually a problem because what happens is, is that the, the heat is going to leak into this cylinder and this cylinder is going to leak into the piston crown. The piston crown but there's no cylinder head for that heat to leak away into. So what does that mean? Well, it means that the cylinder, that this in here just gets hotter. And you think, well, great. If the gases in here as they're expanding gets hotter, that means we'll get more power out. Yeah. But also, <laughs> if we just converted this into this arrangement, you would then start to melt components, right? So yes, you would have... Um, less of a surface area to leak away heat to because you don't have a cylinder head for both cases, but that extra heat is now melting components because you've got to remember, whoever designed this cylinder, and this is actually a BMW GE um, 450, but if you, whoever designed this cylinder, right, had it on the edge of what's possible to make it as efficient as possible. If we swap that over to this, then we are then in a sense overheating. And you might say, well, maybe you can cool it better, but then you're just losing that heat, right? If you cool it better, you are still losing that heat. This is one of the problems um, with thermal efficiency, right? You can't just say, well, let's just make it hotter, right? People do, and it's called nitrous. And the problem is, is if you don't adequately cool it between 
combustion cycles, so basically they go usually rich or you go wet and you use latent heat of vaporization, stuff like that. If you don't do that, you are going to cook your parts. And, you know, it, what I'm saying is it's not as simple as, well, we just take the cylinder head off this and then mirror it. So we've got this system and away we go. We're going to have higher combustion temperatures. So therefore, we're going to get more power out of it. Now, if you have a system, an engine system that wasn't this one, you know, uh, you can work around this to get slightly better thermal efficiencies, but not anywhere what you would expect from this. What I'm saying is anywhere better than you would theoretically in your mind with this system. You know what I mean? You can't just get the parts, double them up and say, well, we're missing a cylinder head. So therefore, any heat that was lost to that, you know, we're now going to increase the, 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 the temperature inside our combustion chamber hence more power you know stuff like that it's not that simple it literally is an engine basically it is literally an an engine like this cylinder head's been chucked in the bin right we just chuck the cylinder head in the bin and then we basically just double one up on top of the other so we get this system and we create this system that's all we're doing basically now like i say there are slight things you can eke out of it if you're just quite clever. And with diesel, it works a lot better. So that hence why you see a lot of these opposed piston engines running diesel, that kind of thing. Um, the one thing that you do gain is that you are missing two cylinder heads. However, you now have to have ported engines, which I haven't done in this example, obviously. You know, So basically down here in this band, you'd have some kind of port arrangement and the same as that side. If you have exhausts or intakes or vice versa or a mix of the two, if you really want to be crazy or whatever, you do have this system. But then saying that, that you're getting into porting and the problem with porting is that porting is usually good for one power band and makes the engine, it, it, it doesn't prefer being throttled. Plain engines are good for stuff like that. You know, you just basically set your RPM and pretty much fucking stay there. You know what I mean? And trains and stuff like that and ships for power generation. That's why they were used. So the Deltic, the uh, the Deltic, this engine, that's what it was used for. It was reused by the Royal Navy and it was used by uh, Network Rail for trains and stuff. I think it was Network Rail that actually did buy them um, or whatever it was called back in the day. But, um, yeah, you know, you use it for either power generation or a ship. Again, power generation or for a train, power generation. You can sit it at its optimum RPM and just let it tick over and it's fine. It doesn't mean that these can't be throttle throttled. What it means is that because of the... It's like two strokes, right? Two strokes... Um, you know, you have to go through all that resonance and stuff and power, va power valves. You know, variable exhausts for two strokes were abandoned um, in the wake of the power valve. That's basically what the power valve is. It's almost like a, a, a variable length exhaust is a power valve. Um, that helped with making it thr throttleable. Um, but you know, with machines like this, you could, you know, you can do the same thing and stuff. But then, you, if you're going to do that, you have to have a resonance exhaust. And you imagine these engines, big cylinders, these resonance things would be fucking, they'd, they'd fill your car boot kind of thing because you'd use them for a car, something like that. It's just that people see these and go, wow, you know, no cylinder head, it's just like ultimate power. But this is the thing, you create more power. Um, because it's a two-stroke as well, you've got to remember that. You are going through fuel at twice the rate. So if you gear it properly, you know, at the end of the day, what you end up with is about the same. What you are gaining is just not having them cylinder heads to carry around. And the benefit of that is um, not having the cost and complexity of these systems. Um, so I actually do see a... Um, there might be a, a, an uptake in these kind of engines, just in like this, just like in a sense, in a very simple way, more like this, right? Or, you know, the Opok engine, the Opok engine with the, um, this one, this is a bit of a crude animation, this thing with the rods. Ah, these rods are horrible. Now, we, we don't like that. Get away with that. That's just, 
scary spice. You are better off, instead of having this single crank, having a crank at either end. Because you kind of, you have these linear bearings here, and then you have this, uh, why, 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 just, just have two cranks. You are better off with having two cranks, because that's static weight, you know what I mean? And if you have them counter-rotating counter like this, you know, balances is really good. You could have a system, let me just select all of this so we can get rid of it. You can have a system, oh there's always bloody one isn't there? <laughs> you could have a system like this uh, and it basically just be a, a, you know, a, a power generator, a, a range extender, that kind of thing, a hybrid, you know what I mean? And you just pick a perfect RPM for it. Just have it run at a perfect RPM. And with direct gasoline injection, you are trying, the, you can tell that this is kind of the roadmap they're going on with cars especially, is that the direct injection um, research that has been done, in a sense, lends itself to this because you don't really use diesel because everyone's worried about particulate matter and... Oh, yeah, you know, all the pandas that are keeling over and dying because, well, they can't be asked to mate bamboo and then also diesel. Um, you know, the world, whole world's against them. But, uh, you know, you can have a small unit like this with a tank as a range extender, you know, and it can just sit there and stay at the optimum RPM. You know, no need for resonance chambers or anything shite like that. Direct gasoline injection away you go, you know, because you don't want to have that resonance chamber, you want to use that for cats, and you can have a series of cats, um, you know, where half the engine is basically just catalytic converters, where it basically goes through a stages of cleaning it, so basically what comes out of your exhaust is pretty much fucking air and carbon dioxide, and then that would be that, and then you could just have a lightweight system like this, it's cheap, you know, because look what you've got, you've got cylinders, you have cylinders, some cooling oil pumps, whatever, and because you could run it at constant RPM, and because you're basically creating a generator, you could wait until it gets up to, you know, RPM, and to save fuel, you have it slowly increase RPM, you don't have to have it, you know, rev up really quickly, big when you're on 10% battery, and then just, then, you know, have it um, use a, some kind of clutch and a drive, then have it, you know, charge the generator at optimum RPM, charge the battery and then just cut off, automatically cut off. And you could wrap it in cooling and all sorts. You know what I mean? So this is what I imagine um, is the real use for it. The problem is with these other systems, like this thing is, it's almost trying to make an entire engine system out of it. And, you know, you can see there's a, a flywheel there, gear on there with a clutch on, stuff like that. It's, this is, it's too many parts, just forget it. All these parts, all these processes, these long rods, ugh, all these bearings, all these, these you know, it's just, just no, no one's going to like it. These injectors, all the, ah, get, get, get away with that. No one's going to want to know about that, but just something very simple. Obviously, there's some stuff missing from this, you know what I mean? But the world is already tooled up for this, right? We already met cranks, we already met rods, we already met pistons, we already met cylinders. We need some injectors, we need some sleeves with some ports in. And you would go out of your way to get the best DLCs or whatever anti-friction coatings on your, you know, your gudgeon pins and your bearings and just bloody everything. You'd do that. You'd go to that extent. You know, with a system like this, um, because it's not a proper pumping two-stroke, although you could use it as a pumping two-stroke, or you could run a little supercharger off it or anything like that. Uh, you know, we're not talking high pressures or anything. You could run needle roller bearings in here, or angular contact bearings, or, you know, whatever you want. You could run whatever you want, and then, you know, so you don't have to have an oil pump system. You just use splash or something. You know, you turn it this way. You use some kind of whatever, you know. The fact of the matter is, is that... I think that these opposed piston engines do not have a future as standalone units. Well, obviously no engine does. I don't even see them as a hybrid um, 
drive motor, I see these as our engine, I see these as battery chargers to give people that range. You know what I mean? And you'll probably see stuff like this, you know, if they ever get around to doing, because one of the big drawbacks with battery powered stuff is big horsepower stuff, um, tractors, stuff like that, trucks, lorries, you know, you can't be charging your batteries every four hours to do real haulage. But if you could have a fuel tank that charges up your battery, you're not getting anything for free. The fact of the matter is, is that you can then have an engine that doesn't have to be torquey. It can just be a balance between power output and lightweight. You know what I mean? Because it's just a power just because it's a battery charger in a sense that turns you know liquid liquid awesomeness into electrical charge then the lightness is what you want more than anything and you could replace batteries you know what i mean if this thing has to kick in every half an hour then you can save yourself in battery weight and replace it with this and fuel good point actually i'm going to actually look into the concept of that as a comparison between one and the other any road, I just wanted to do a little video on, because a, a lot of these designs that people are sending me are opposed piston engines, and I just wanted to make cl it clear that it basically is just one engine stacked on top of the other without the cylinder heads, and that's where you get the real benefit, is the fact that you don't have to pay in a weight penalty or a cost penalty for having that cylinder head. Hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.